Food mate. Nom, 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 nom. Food is a bitch. You're damn right it is. Nom. We humans have to eat and drink the right things constantly to maintain a functioning body, especially as you get more active. And the relationship video games have with food can be a bit fickle because video games try to actually not be bitches because people like to enjoy video games. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. Most people anyway. However, food is such a common worldly item that games often try to incorporate it in ways that fit the gameplay. And because games have been doing this for a few years now, we can really start to pick out a few patterns of implementation. Namely, three methods of utilizing the human concept of food in gameplay. So, without further ado, let's talk about video game food. By far the most common and simple implementation of nourishment is the health boost. Eat something and get health. You see this all the time, and it's become somewhat of a trope of video games, classic video game stuff. Real life eats are sustenance and are directly related to our real life health. So food is a great real life counterpart to the video game construct health packs. In this sense, food is a means to implement health packs and not the other way around. And it makes sense in video game logic, though it does make me wish that I could eat a thousand fucking packs of chips or some other shit like that and just feel fine. In fact, feel reinvigorated and better than I did before. Anyway, in the same piss tube as the health boost is the stat buff, or the stat change, or really just like the buff. It's like a potion, basically. You know what I'm talking about. You could argue this is similar enough to the health pack to constitute it being in the same little uh, group, but uh, I could also argue for you to go fuck yourself, so... Who, who cares, really? The stat buff is as simple as it sounds. You eat something and it boosts your statistics. Sometimes one statistic, sometimes all of them, or many, or whatever, who cares? Sometimes there's a trade-off too. And almost always, it is temporary. It again takes this idea of sustenance and uses it in a way that impacts gameplay with video game logic. And it can exist side by side with the health boost because they are very similar in concept. The third common way games use food is probably what you immediately thought of upon glancing over this video's title or thumbnail, and it's of course the hunger system. A hunger system is any game mechanic that requires you to eat food to survive. You know, like a uh, real life hunger, like how humans need to eat food to uh, survive. Requires being the key word there. Hunger systems need to force players to eat food. They're usually found in survival games where the core gameplay loop is dependent on surviving and thriving in a dangerous environment. Hunger systems are a great way to get players to go explore and interact with their environment and they create tension. Now most of them have a cooking mechanic to get more nutrition out of your food by cooking it. But I think it's important to note that almost all hunger systems aren't strict on what diet you have, which is really where their realism falls. Now all of you know just by looking at me that I have the physique of a Greek god. Yeah, 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 that doesn't look that doesn't look too bad. Oh man, that's beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so obviously I'm not the buffest yeah. guy, but I know enough about fitness to tell you that eating cookies for your entire life will cause some problems. A man ate 40 cookies every day since age 13, ending in death. <laughs> Any hoosies, some things I've picked up on about hunger and thirst systems from some good survival games are a grace period as you just spawn, or slash end a grace period after filling up, you know, after filling up after a good meal. Using food as a direct incentive for in-game progression by tying means of attaining food to in-game progression. And also attaching physical activity to hunger loss is another cool thing I saw. But there's an entire ocean of survival games and all of them will have large to small differences in their hunger and thirst systems. And a lot of them will still be great despite these differences. And <laughs> some of them will be rust too. And you can of course see the hunger system combined with healing food or the stat buff. <laughs> So 
I just showed you three different types of food mechanics and I'll just be honest here and tell you that food specifically isn't really the point of this video. Rather it's about how games take aspects of the real world and represent them in simple and more abstract ways. Somewhat of a more prevailing example of this will be the health bar. Taking the idea of a living being's a physical state of health and rendering it down into something that is very simple and easy to understand. And then, as you can see, that idea of health becomes more nuanced in different games. In many FPS games, a headshot will do a lot more damage than a leg shot. And in games like Fallout or other, you can actually just damage individual limbs. And he's gonna rack the slide? And you can continue trying to simulate reality, but there comes a point where just from a gameplay perspective, it doesn't really make much sense. Now you might be wondering to yourself why I clickbaited you all and decided to use food as a means to communicate this idea. And um, the um, hmm. hmm. Nah, I'm joking. I actually have a good reason, or I, I think it's a good reason. It's because the three big ways food is represented in video games can tell us a bit about how games utilize things from the real world. The most common food mechanic, the health pack, is great. It's simple and effective and is very understanding for the player and it adequately serves its purpose. The stat buff is a more abstract concept that can deepen gameplay by using sustenance in a way that still vaguely is related to real life nutrients. And the hunger system is meant to simulate reality. And as a result of that, it becomes a core part of the gameplay. Reality is generally very complex, so video games will represent it in ways that are abstract or simplified or <laughs> And the more a game mechanic tries to simulate reality, it'll become more complex and generally more game-defining. Role-playing games and their love of player stats, like intelligence and speech, things like stamina bars, just go ahead and look at your favorite game, and pick out abstract and more simulated mechanics that represent reality.